So hello friends. So I'll be talking today on this uh, Journal Club uh, Trace Two trial. Uh, this was published on 9th Feb 2023 in Lancet so as a part of the journal series. So it's an interesting trial. Uh, so and we would just go through this trial whether this would change the current standard of care in stroke patients. Uh, so this was a connectoplase use in cerebrovascular events, a phase three multicenter open label randomized control trial. It's a non-inferiority trial that came from China. So albeit it is non-inferior, so we will possibly look at it. With, this has bearing on the change of practice, whether we would now contemplate on using tenecteplase as opposed to alteplase in patients with stroke. So conventionally, uh, the thrombolytic of choice for the stroke has been alteplase. And uh, the, the reason is possibly of the background of the trials that were prevailing with alteplase and the comfort of using it. And this was considered as a standard of care. And alteplase is used as a bolus dose. So usually 10% is given as a bolus dose followed by infusion over hour, whereas tenecteplase is given as a bolus dose. So the whole study was to see whether tenecteplase is non-inferior to alteplase. So the background for this is there was an ACT trial, which is a registry link trial, which came from Canadian group, which very similarly compared tenecteplase versus alteplase. Tenecteplase was used at a dose of 0.25, per, 0.25 mg per kg versus alteplase, which was 0.9 mg per kg. And in this ACT registry trial, it was shown that tenecteplase was non-inferior with regards to 90-day functional outcome. And it was non-inferior to alteplase with regards to safety. So there was a trial that is published in 2022 in Lancet itself, which has clearly shown that tenecteplase was non-inferior. Since it was a registry-based, this was a randomized controlled trial, which has been uh, done by these Chinese authors. So before this, the whole contention was with regards to alteplase, whether the dosage has to be differential between the European population and the Asian population, considering the Asian population uh, may react differently to the type of dose that is given to the European population. For that, there are two trials. So there is the SITS most trial, which was done mainly in European patients, and SITS new patient, which was done in Asian. So this particular SITS new study was done by Indian authors to basically check if the dose of 0.9 mg per kg alteplase is good for Asian population as well. And it was shown, and this it's new came in 2014, and the SITS most had come in 2007 in Lancet by the Swedish group. So both these studies really showed that the dosage of 0.9 mg per kg of alteplase is safe and effective even in Asian population. So this was shown very clearly that there is no difference. The reason why we're talking about this is because the alteplase is the 0.25 mg which is considered as a standard, was used in the Asian population. This is to substantiate that this dose is safe. Then there was an enchanted, the backdrop is that there was an enchanted trial again, which came from the Chinese authors and the Australian group, where they wanted to see whether the lesser dose of alteplase was good enough and not necessarily 0.9 mg. So they looked at 0.6 mg per kg and they found it to be inferior. So which means to say, the dosage for thrombolysis is same even in Asian and European population. So that was the whole basis to substantiate that the dose used should be standard and it should not be differential based on the population groups. Then the TRACE-1 trial, which was a phase two randomized control trial, was to look at the safety of tenecteplase at the dose of 0.25 per kg. And they found that the tenecteplase at 0.25 mg per kg was similar with regards to safety as compared to alteplase at 0.9 mg per kg. So this was clearly shown in TRACE-1 trial, which was published in Stroke Vascular Neurology Journal in 2022. So the TRACE-2 trial was like ACT registry trial, was to compare tenecteplase versus alteplase in patients with stroke who are eligible for IV thrombolysis, but who are not eligible for endovascular thrombectomy which means they did not have a large vessel thrombus, which would make them eligible for endovascular thrombectomy. So these patients were ineligible for endovascular thrombectomy. So these were the patients which were selected to test between tenecteplase and alteplase. So it was a multicentric prospective open label randomized control trial 
53 hospitals across China. One is to one randomization comparing tenecteplase 0.25 mg per kg versus alteplase 0.9 mg per kg. The maximum dosage of tenecteplase was 25 mg in total and alteplase was 90 mg in total, which means one. So for a 100 kg individual, you can go up to 25 mg and 90 mg, but more than that, the dosage remains the same. So treatment had to be administered within 4.5 hours. The modified rank and score had to be less than or equal to 1. Just for our trainees uh, revision, the modified rank and score 0 to 1 means there is no symptoms or no significant disability. Once the window period starts, the, the disability sets in. So these patients were excluded after 4.5 hours or if the disability was very severe, they were excluded. And NIHS score was 5 to 25. So these were some of the inclusion criteria. And the clinician was masked for the treatment type, which means he was blinded. He wouldn't know whether tenecteplase is being given or alteplase is being given. But clinician was not masked for the randomization process, which means clinicians would know which are the groups that would be randomized to one arm and another. So this possibly could have infused or instilled some bias into this. And this has been... Uh, referenced in the uh, limitations part of the study. So the primary outcome was to look at modified rank and score of 0 to 1, which is mild disability or no disability at 90 days. And safety outcome was to look at any patients who developed intracranial hemorrhage within 36 hours. So 1,430 patients were recruited between 12 Jan 2021 to 29 May 2022. So, total of 1,430 patients, and this is a brief summary I'm giving. I'll show you the other tables. 716 in the tenecteplase group, 714 nicely randomized between two groups. So, the primary outcome was to look at no disability or minimum disability at the end of 90 days. As you see, uh, there was no significant difference between the tenecteplase and alteplase. Numerically, although you may see that the number is little higher on tenecteplase, Symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage less than 36 hours. As you see, there is no difference between tenecteplase and alteplase, no statistical difference. And they looked at 90 day mortality. Just uh, for all the listeners, pay attention to the number. 90 day mortality numerically appeared to be higher 46 in tenecteplase, 35 in alteplase, although it did not attain statistical significance. And this was referenced in the sort of a discussion that numerically the mortality numbers were high in tenecteplase. So look, let's look into the tables. So when you look at the baseline comparison, like any other good randomized control trial, there's no difference between tenecteplase and alteplase. So the one that I've highlighted in the red is the cost. So when you look at the tenecteplase cost, you would see in China, the tenecteplase cost was much higher as compared to alteplase. I'm just making a reference of this because I'll give you the cost comparison in India, which is a little different because that would possibly have a bearing on whether we would adopt the change in practice. And this is the modified rank in score between tenecteplase and alteplase at various time intervals. If you look at it, this is 0 to 1 at 3 months, and uh, there is uh, 0 to 2 at 3 months and modified at... So there is... Uh, they've looked at rank in score difference between tenecteplase and uh, alteplase at various sort of uh, intervals, and they found... As you see, none of the p-values are significant. So there's no real difference in the uh, ranking score between tenecteplase and alte alteplase at various time intervals. Uh, so this is again uh, a, a, a pictorial depiction of uh, modified ranking score difference. Uh, so as you see, most of them fell between 0 and 1, which is uh, no symptom or mild disability and very few in the severe disability group. So this is about the, and you look at the forest plot of all the subgroup analysis they have done between tenecteplase and alteplase, whether there was any difference in male patients, female patients, and in the patients who underwent any bridging thrombectomy, and age-wise, NIHSS-wise, and even within three hours and more than three hours. So basically subgroup stratification of various aspects to see whether any difference between uh, tenecteplase and alteplase was shown, uh, did not show any difference, and none of the differences attained statistical significance. So there's really no difference between tenecteplase and alteplase in any of the subgroup sort of a analysis that uh, one has looked into. 
So look at this table. So this is a table of um, the side effects or intracranial hemorrhage between tenecteplase and alteplase. So the one that has uh, marked in the red, if you look at it, so parenchymal hematoma of intracranial hemorrhage within 36 hours, if you see, it is much higher in tenecteplase. So only when we read through the full text and very carefully looking at the tables, one would notice this. It is 1%, 10 patients versus 3 patients. It almost attains statistical significance. So this particular aspect of the study is not detailed by authors, even when you read the discussion part, limitations part. So this is very carefully ignored, but you would see that uh, the risk of hemorrhage has been high in tenecteplase and it was almost close to attaining statistical significance. So this is something one needs to keep in mind before we really consider this is an absolute alternative and practice changing. So anyway, we'll get expert inputs and we'll further discuss. So, and the authors do mention in discussion that in tenecteplase group, there was numerically higher mortality. So it was 46 versus 35, 46 in tenecteplase and 35, but it did not attain statistical significance. And even symptomatic intracranial, they do mention 15 versus 13. But if you look at this table at 36 hours, is 10 versus 3. So which is something which one needs to keep in back of mind. And they've compared TRACE2 and the ACT trial. So the modified Rankine score of 0 to 1, which is a mild or no disability, was higher in TRACE2. Means TRACE2 had a better patients with less disability and possibly no disability. But ACT had... Uh, possibly lesser number of uh, milder disability. That is something one is trying. NIHS score median baseline was lower. Between TRACE2 had a better cohort of patients who would have possibly responded better to this thrombolysis is the argument. And most importantly, endovascular thrombectomy post-thrombolysis was done in a very less number of patients, only 4%. But in act, around 25% of the patients had large vessel thrombosis and which needed endovascular thrombectomy. And there it was shown tenecteplase to be non-superior. So it was not superior to alteplase in large vessel thrombosis needing endovascular thrombectomy. But again, this is a point of contention. So they had 505 patients who underwent endovascular thrombectomy where tenecteplase was found to be non-superior. This was an act which was a registry-based trial from Canada published in 2022. But prior to this, the interesting aspect is prior to this, there was an extend 2 trial which came from Australia. It was a phase 2 trial where they looked at endovascular thrombectomy post-thrombolysis and they found tenecteplase was superior to alteplase. So the act trial said that tenecteplase was non-superior, which is the later trial. But the extent trial showed that tenecteplase was superior to alteplase, especially in patients undergoing endovascular thrombectomy. The reperfusion was better. So after this, there was a Greek meta-analysis which came in 2021 stroke, which was a meta-analysis of four randomized control trials, 433 patients where they looked at endovascular large vessel thrombosis needing endovascular thrombectomy where tenecteplase was used. In this group, they saw tenecteplase group had better recanalization and better functional outcome as compared to alteplase. So this is a very important point for the listeners. So in patients with large vessel thrombosis needing endovascular thrombectomy, so the extent trial said alteplase is superior, meta-analysis said uh, tenecteplase is superior, and your extent trial said tenecteplase is superior, but the ACT trial said tenecteplase is non-superior to alteplase. So this is where there is a, we need a clarity whether we would adopt a change in practice, especially in patients with large vessel thrombosis needing endovascular thrombectomy. So now the whole contention is how did we arrive on the dose, whether there are studies to look at the dose. So again, the trace one trial, which was to look at the safety of tenecteplase as compared to alteplase as compared to all different dosages, 0.1 mg per kg, versus 0.25 mg per kg versus 0.32 versus 0.9. And they found tenecteplase at 0.1 to 0.25 were safe, but at 0.32 mg per kg had a worse safety profile. So this is where one would deduce that 0.25 mg per kg is an optimal dose. So this is how one would arrive at the dose. Before that, after the, there was a Norwegian trial called NOR-TEST2 trial, which again compared different dosages. It compared 